It is 2013, but we're still talking about women cracking the glass ceiling because the reality is that only 18% of women in Canada hold senior management roles. Kim Thompson falls in the 18% category as a senior vice president of advisory services at Credential Financial and has been named one of Canada's top 100 most powerful women by the Women's Executive Network. She joins me in studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning. 100 most powerful women. What do you what do you think when you hear that? <laughs> well, Phil, it's good for me, not so good for my husband, but <laughs> but uh it, it, listen, it's a uh, it's a huge honor to be perfectly honest. Uh I'm I'm humbled. I'm humbled by the company that I am keeping uh, with the uh, the other um people being recognized on the list. I'm I'm humbled by the fact that uh, my organization and colleagues in the organization put forward my my nomination to be included, and uh, it's uh, it's an experience, and I'm thankful for it. That's interesting because it sounds like it was a fairly formal process that you were nominated. I'm always kind of amused by magazines, just you know, naming the top fifty or the top one hundred or something like that, because I often wonder what. What's the criteria? How did they how did they pick this person over that? But in, in your case, it's it's sort of a it, it's a judged position after nomination. Correct. Yeah, there is a, there there is a process where uh, again, uh, in in my case, it was uh, some colleagues that uh, are on my team uh, came together to uh, to nominate me and obviously learn more about my background and felt that. Um, that the role that I've played in uh, with Credential and and previous roles was worthy of recognition uh, in the Can- Canadian financial uh, industry. Did you, when you were growing up, did you think of uh, a glass ceiling? Did it, did it even occur to you that it was going to be that being a woman was might be a barrier in terms of uh, jobs? <laughs> Well, I grew up in a family of three boys and three brothers, so I, I never had the opportunity to. Uh, I uh, never had the opportunity to suggest uh, or to think that um, that I couldn't achieve. Um, my parents were, we had a saying in our house, and I, uh, I still use it with my kids today, that nobody has any fun at the pity party. Uh, my kids aren't allowed to go to the pity party, and, uh, and, and I don't allow myself to go there. And that's how I survived, a house full of boys. And uh, so the notion of not succeeding or not reaching where I wanted to be or what I wanted to do, because I was a woman or because I was a girl, never entered my mind. But it's interesting because I've seen such change in one working lifetime. Uh, when I started in this business, there were people who thought women couldn't be reporters. Women couldn't be anchors. I mean, read the news, a woman, are you kidding? Um, and, and yet, in this one sort of generation, there are women heading networks, there are women running newsrooms, there are certainly women anchoring newscasts all over North America. I don't know what it's like in the financial business, but in the in the media business, there are a lot of opportunities for women. In the, you know, I would I would suggest that every industry seems to have its own benchmark uh, with respect to its acceptance of different leadership styles. And whether that leadership style happens to be indicative of a woman or a man, I, I think they each have their own nuances and uh, somehow uh, resemble the individual industry in which people work. In the financial services industry, it's 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 probably similar to your experience. Uh, if you look back at where it was 15, 20 years ago, very different than where it mm-hmm. is today. Uh, certainly, uh, women um, are more accepted at the um, at the boardroom table. Um, but I think it's but I think it's more than just women. I think it's uh, an appreciation for different leadership styles, and I and I think that that's changed significantly, both men and women, over the last twenty years. I like your line. There's no, no fun at the pity party. <coughs> I think that's, I mean, that's an interesting sort of motto to have and to, and to live by. Like, don't feel sorry for yourself. Right. Uh, how, did, how did the boys do in your family? <laughs> well, they're, they're also uh, what I would deem successful. Um, and and, and that, that perception wasn't, wasn't just sort of my ability to survive within my family, but also, you know, my parents didn't allow me to go there either. And... I think it is indicative of how you need to accept control of your career. You need to accept control of where your career is going and where you want to take it. 
um, to uh, reflect that it's other people's responsibility to make it happen for you. Uh, I think that uh, is a challenge, and it's a challenge, again, whether you're a man or a woman. You need to get control of it. It's uh, If you're heading in a direction and you find yourself in an environment where your values aren't aligned, then... Does that happen to you? Um, probably over my career, I have been in uh, situations where I have felt my values compromised, and that's probably when I... I most am at e- at uh, dis- in a discomfort, a position of discomfort, uh, but I don't uh, take it upon myself to uh, change other people's values per se. Um, I'll help them reflect on where I see gaps and opportunity for improvement. But uh, if that can, if that situation continues, then it's my prerogative to to move on and to find another uh, situation or organization where my values are aligned. And that's that's very much a part of my motto. Talking with Kim Thompson, Senior Vice President, Advisory Services with Credential Financial, recently named one of Canada's 100 Most Powerful Women. Uh, I welcome your calls if you'd like to join in the conversation, perhaps share your experience or have a question to ask uh, uh, Kim Thompson. 604-280-9898 is my number, toll-free 1-877-399-9898. You're with Bill Good on CKNW News Talk 980, and my phones are open to you. Talking with Kim Thompson, Senior Vice President, Advisory Services with Credential Financial, named one of Canada's 100 Most Powerful Women. We're still talking about cracking the glass ceiling. Um, If you have teenaged girls, do you treat them any differently than your teenage boys? Do you advise them in any different fashion? Do you try to encourage them to... uh, think of their future in terms of uh, not being restrained by by being a girl? 604-280-9898. Uh, is there much difference in your life and your male colleagues in terms of the way you have to organize your life? I mean, you have two kids. You have a stay-at-home mom. Stay-at-home dad. Stay-at-home dad. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, not many people. Um you know, not, not not many dads these days have a have a stay at home mom, um, so that but that that works for you, and it, obviously it works for your husband. It, it it does work for us. We've been very fortunate, Bill, in that uh, we've been able to. I took four years off, uh, removed myself completely from the industry uh, when the kids were really really young. Um, that was important for me to do at the time. That's how. I defined uh, having it all. Um, I do take the opportunity to redefine that from time to time in my life. And when the kids were, you know, very, very young, that was important to me. Um, Five years later, when I redefine what having it all for me at that point in time, I was fortunate enough that my husband was also in a situation where he was in a bit of a fork in the road and um, was more than uh, happy for us to switch up. And... um, he's he's happy to be at home it's uh, it's one thing to say that uh, that uh, you want to be at home it's a whole other ball game doing it every day and uh, my kids are 11 and uh, 13 so we are he's the proverbial taxi but um <laughs> so you know we organize our lives around that my role as uh, as a mother and as a nurturer and all those things never stops um and that when that home life is if there's disruption there it, of course, it has a personal impact to my. You can't turn it off. No, but it's interesting that you took four years out and you were still able to re-engage and move up that up that ladder. Absolutely. It it when I decided to to step away uh, for me personally, I stepped away completely. Um, that was because I uh, I thoroughly enjoy uh, working. I enjoy being around professionals. I I enjoy the whole experience. But uh, And I knew if I kept one toe in the water, I would be forever tempted. Mm. Um, so I, I stepped away completely. I knew it had risks. I knew that when I came back uh, or when I decided to come back that my share price would be down to some degree. But I had the confidence that, um, listen, four years while you're in it might seem like a long time in the grand scheme of things. Um, as much as things change, a lot of things don't really change. 
Um, and when I came back, the reentry took a little bit longer. I think that was more a function of the timing and the markets at the time uh, was a little bit tough in our industry. But um, I came in, again, knowing full well that uh, I couldn't reenter where I left. But I had the confidence that I would reenter and continue my journey. You, you talked about uh, still being a nurturer. I mean, you're still very much a mom. And uh, we had this discussion a f- few weeks ago about stay-at-home mums. And sometimes they have kind of an attitude uh, toward people who, you know, like you, who are working full-time and uh, as if you are not a, a full-time mum as well. Uh, most of the mums that I've known who've worked have worked really hard at making time for their kids, getting to their games, traveling with their kids, still being a nurturer and a mom. Yeah, you, uh, that's not a role that you can just uh, take your hat off uh, when you wake up in the morning and decide that's not where you're going to do that day, as any mom or, or dad, for that matter, knows. Uh, I would say that, um, that, that I, I have the opportunity um, to sort of... Um, my, my husband takes care of a lot of, obviously, the home duties that, that helps me um, to, to do what I do. Um, but that said, um, everybody has their own line in the sand around um, work impacting the balance of their home life. And you, do, you need the confidence in, uh, in your voice and your position as to raise your hand when that line's being crossed because you just will not be happy in your job or happy in your career if that's constantly pushing that line and that balance for you. You, you talked about uh, <coughs> growing up in a house full of boys. You have a boy and a girl at home. Is is there a difference in the way you treat them or you advise them? Um, is there still that kind of divide between boys and girls today in terms of the the way they think about their future, their education, their opportunities? Um, I would say that there's there's a difference between boys and girls. I'm sure as any parent could could attest to. And oh yes, mine are no different. Uh, absolutely, I would say, uh, Bill. We I really don't feel as though we uh, we coach or uh, treat them differently. Um, we treat them differently because they're two different people with two different uh, sure. opportunities for growth and challenges and all those things that uh, that frustrate you as a parent, but um, and then uh, give you a sense of pride. But uh, I, I would actually say that perhaps um, what might be different for them is that, um, is that their mother is a full-time uh, executive and their father stays at home. So that in itself has a different perspective for them. Um, there's uh, a little less gray um, with my husband at home versus perhaps when I'm at home. And, um, and in some ways that's, uh, that's made them have to step up as well. Um, Your daughter would look down and, uh, and know that if, if she wanted to be an executive in her adult life, that that would be an option that would uh, would be there. She's she's seen it uh, all the time she's been growing up. Absolutely. And we made the point, uh, again, uh, they are coming. Uh, they'll be joining uh, the gala dinner for this recognition is in uh, Toronto tomorrow night. Uh, we are all traveling back as a family, and I want them to be at the table and to see their mother, and if it was their father, it would be their father, I want them to see and appreciate that uh, their parents, through hard work, uh, are making an impact. And, and I think it's important that you can't teach that in school. Uh, it's important that they be a part of this experience. Back with uh, more with Kim Thompson right after this. Talking with Kim Thompson, Senior Vice President, Advisory Services with Credential Financial, and she's going to be going to Toronto tomorrow for a gala dinner to celebrate uh, Canada's 100 most powerful women. It's interesting. I was just looking at at Twitter, and Sean writes, uh, Thanks for your interview today with Kim. I like listening to successful people and how they think. And uh, the past couple of years, we've done a series with CEOs. Uh, Christine Day is one, and I think she's on on, on the list of 100 as well, uh, with Lululemon. And I got a tremendously positive response from people all around town uh, just coming up to me and saying, I'm really enjoying your CEO series. And I think a lot of people are just interested in hearing how successful people think, um, how different each one has been from the other, but uh, also they're, you know, kind of what's, what's made them a success. Did you have mentors? Did you have people that, 
you looked up to and admired and, and wanted to, to, to kind of, I don't know if follow in their footsteps is the right word, but you know what I mean, emulate the way they behave. Right. Throughout my career, I, I have actually never been a part of a formal mentorship, and, uh, and, I, and I fully support uh, those programs uh, to uh, help refine and, um, and round out people's skills. I absolutely, throughout my entire career, and, and uh, receiving this type of recognition does provide you with an opportunity to reflect back on your career and, and to sort of determine who had, a, who had a positive impact, who maybe didn't have such a positive impact. Um, still a learning opportunity all the same. Um, so I, I did. I had a couple of folks. Um, uh, one happened to be um, a male, and I also had another uh, woman sort of take me under their wing, uh, so to speak, and guide me uh, through some um, uh, through some career moments. And uh, it's been extremely helpful. I always have there for me. There never is. I've never desi- defined success as that I've reached that. It's always there's always opportunity to be better. There's always opportunity to improve, uh, and I think that everybody, um, that's, that's, that's your, again, it's your responsibility to find those opportunities to improve, and, um, and I certainly uh, take that upon myself that um, while I'm getting a recognition, um, there's still, uh, there's more for me to learn, no, no doubt about it. Do you have to work hard at, uh, at a work-life balance? Do you travel? Do you ski? Do you, I mean... Do you have a life away from work? I, I, I have a life away from work. Uh, 50% of that life away from work is spent in the arena, and the other 50% spent, spent at a ballpark. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I do, I do travel. Um, I, uh, and again, as I mentioned earlier, it's important for uh, there's times, uh, for example, when I needed to travel, I was supposed to be away, and it was Halloween. And uh, and I went to uh, my boss and I said, I, I just I can't do it. I, I need to be home. I knew I didn't have very many Halloweens coming down the pipe for me. And um, and I just said, that's what I needed to do. So do I work hard at it? Uh, it's something that's intuitive for me. I um, I know when uh, when I'm when it's challenging me and I know when it's um, when it perhaps is giving me an element of stress. Uh, but it, that's mine to uh, that's mine to deal with, and um, and my husband and mine to work out. Thanks for doing this, and uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much. I think it's going to be fun.